number 29, a uh, meter stick of negligible mass is placed on a fulcrum at the 0.4 meter mark, the 1 kilogram mass hung at the 0 mark, and a 5 kilogram mass hung at the 1 meter mark. Okay, I'm going to make a picture of that. So here's the meter stick, here's the 0.4 mark, here's the center. Uh, and this is the fulcrum here, right? So it's kind of balanced here. One kilogram mass at the zero mark. And so that'd be, oh, well, let's just make that into newtons. So that's 10 newtons there. And then a half a kilogram at the one meter mark. So that's going to be five newtons there. The meter stick is held horizontally and released. Immediately after release, the magnitude of the net torque on the meter stick about the fulcrum. All right, so. Okay, sorry, I was looking for the mass of the meter stick. So the, me the meter stick itself, if you're looking for that here, it's negligible mass. So the net torque, um, so I have two torques, one this way, one this way. One's positive and one's negative. So, uh, Let's, this looks like it's going to be the bigger one. So this distance here, this is 0.4 away, and this is 0.6 away from the pivot, right? So this torque is force times radius times the angle, that's 90 degrees, and then this one, force times radius, also at 90 degrees. And one's positive, one's negative. So this is going to be 4 newton meters minus, and this is going to be three newton meters. So that's one newton meter of torque. They're fighting against each other. They could have given you a picture there. That would have been a little bit nicer. But uh, what are you going to do? So that's A. An object undergoes simple harmonic motion along the x-axis as shown above, where x is equal to zero, objects in equilibrium position, yada yada. Best, the object's acceleration is a function of displacement. Right, so not acceleration versus time. We'll talk about that in a second. And, uh, here, so as it goes back and forth, here, when it's at position zero, the acceleration is zero, right? Because there's no force there. If it's in simple, so think, we're thinking force equals negative kx here, right? Yes? And actually, <laughs> if you just take that equation and say, well, ma then is equal to negative kx. So acceleration is equal to negative k over mx. And that's a constant. So it has to be a straight line with a negative slope. So that's a. But you could also think of it as you go into the positive x's, the acceleration will be negative this way, right? Getting bigger in this linear fashion. And then as you go into the negatives, the acceleration, same as the force, because it's just f equals ma. So those are related to each other just by a constant. So as you go into the negative forces, or negative displacements rather, the acceleration will be in the positive direction, and it will get bigger. So that's A. Number 31. Uh, ball 1 is dropped from rest at time 0. The same instant ball 2 is launched upward from the ground with initial speed v sub 0. And we want to know what time t will the two balls pass each other. So they're going to pass each other at some height. Uh, I'll call that y. Then that means the distance that this one falls is h minus y. And then the times will be the same. And so I'm going to do, so for ball 1 and ball 2, I'm going to set up kinematics equations and see if I can combine them. So for ball 1, I'm releasing it from rest. V uh, I would be 0. It's acceleration. I'm going to take down to be the negative direction for this one. Um, is G. And it's going to drop a distance O. So if I take down to be the negative direction, the distance it goes is actually Y minus H. So that's a little tricky there, right? Because y is bigger than 
Wait a minute. Hold on. If I take down to be the positive direction, no, so that's wrong, then it just does go because h is bigger, so I want the positive version of that, right? So it's going down. So h minus y is correct. And then the t is the same for both, so I definitely want to get that involved. So I want the equation that relates those. That is the equation delta y equals 1 half at squared plus vit, the initial velocity is 0. So delta y, h minus y is equal to 1 half gt squared. So there's an equation for 1. Now for 2, uh, this one is launched. Now for this one, I'm going to say that um, the positive direction is up. This one I said negative. Uh, the positive direction is down, rather. This one I'm going to do positive is up, because this ball is always going up. So vi is equal to v sub 0. Uh, the time is t. The delta y, this one goes up by a distance y. And the acceleration here, I have to say it's negative g, because I pick positive to be up. So combining these again, using the same equation, I have delta y is equal to 1 half a t squared plus v i t. And they want to know at what time do they pass each other. So I would like to substitute out. Um, none of these answers, ha answers have any y. I made up this y variable, right? So I need to get rid of that. So let's add these two equations together. I'm noticing that the y's will cancel out if I do that. So that would give me h on this side. And then on the other side, I have 1 half gt squared. And, oh, are you kidding me? Negative 1 half gt squared? So those cancel. So the time solving for t is equal to h over v sub 0, which is c. I think that's a pretty tricky problem. Uh, number 32. Suppose that the potential energy of a particle constrained to move along the x-axis can be described by the function this, where both k and a are positive constants. And we want the stable equilibrium points about which the particle oscillates. Those are located at. So the, um, the stable equilibrium points are places where the potential energy is at a minimum, right? So we want to find the minimums of this. They're like the, in a potential valley, right? So those would be those equilibrium points. And actually, if they want, well, let's do that and see what happens. Um, so let's see. We have the, we want to find the minimum of this, right? This is an upward opening parabola. So I'll just find the derivative of that. That's equal to uh, kx minus alpha. And I want the places where that's uh, equal to 0. So that's x is equal to uh, alpha over k. And that is the right answer. So the stable equilibrium points are places where the potential energy is at a minimum, which kind of makes sense. If you remember those potential energy graphs, um, we want it to settle in. If you think of it as being like a ramp, those are those low points. Uh, number 33. A ball of mass m falls vertically, hits the floor with the speed of vi, and rebounds with the speed of vf. So uh, what's the magnitude of the impulse exerted on the ball by the floor? So uh, let's say that vf is, let's say that this is positive and the down is negative. Right? So then I would have, um, and these directions are, are super, super important here. And judging by the number of people who missed this, I think this is probably what you messed up. Um, this is a speed, and this is a speed. So direction matters here. So I need that this is positive VF. And then uh, on the way up and on the way down, it had a velocity of negative VI. Right? Um, so. 
Uh, they want to know the impulse. Impulse is equal to change in momentum. So the change in momentum is mass times final velocity minus mass times initial velocity, but the initial velocity is negative vi. So it's this, c. Um, to convince you of this, uh, that it's not, probably a lot of you had, what, b? Um, that you put this. But it's not that, because think about this. If they told you that the speed coming down was 2, and then the speed coming up was 2, is that a zero change in momentum? No, I mean, that's a complete turnaround. That's a big change in momentum. Um, you're flipping it all the way the other way around. So that's tricky, but um, it's a fair question. Let's see if you're paying attention to signs there. Uh, here, you did pretty well on this one. Um, what's the radius of this circle? Where just straight from calculus, you're like, wait a minute, x equals r cosine 3t, y equals r sine. Th these are just parametric equations of a circle, right? And the r is that. You could also try plugging some t's in. It's, it makes a circle that starts out at the point five zero when you plug in zero and so on. The radius of the circle is just five. You could also, if you're thinking equation of circle, hmm, well, I know a circle has an equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So if I could square those, if you do that and add them together, you're going to end up with a 5, too. So a little parametrics there. Uh, which of the following is true of the speed of the particle? Um, well... Since these are, well, since these are both 3t, I guess what you could do is this. You could say, look, the uh, velocity in the x direction is the derivative of this. That's 15, uh, negative 15 sine 3t. And the velocity in the y direction is 15 cosine 3t. Right? So if you want to know the speed, speed in two dimensions is the square root of the... Uh, those derivatives, we know this from calculus, right? And with the sine and the cosine here, those are just going to turn out to be a sine squared plus cosine squared. That will disappear, and it will just be 15. So this is in uniform circular motion, and the speed is 15. And uh, yeah, a lot of us missed that, so that's worth thinking about. All right, there you go.